ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ولا ينتظم في سلكها إلا سالك اللهم صلي وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين يقول عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يموتون على الكلمة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله In the name of Allah the gracious the merciful to him we belong and to him we shall return. We ask Allah Jalla fi Ulah to have to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to have mercy upon us on this blessed day of Jumu'ah. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to be pleased with us, to forgive our sins and our shortcomings, and to reorient our hearts around Him, around Allah. May Allah grant us taqwa. I remind myself and all of my brothers and sisters to always be mindful of Allah, to never forget that He is the Creator, He is the Sustainer, and He is the one to whom all affairs belong and shall return. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who return to Allah, salimin ghanimin, in a state of peace, in a state of success. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Brothers and sisters, on Wednesday, we celebrated, if you will, or commemorated the 4th of July. In the United States, it is the commemoration of what is known as the independence of the original 13 colonies from Great Britain. This is a day that, if you will, marked by a notion of freedom, marked by an idea of freedom, freedom to choose, freedom to self-determination, freedom from tyranny, freedom from oppression, a notion of freedom. And so every year on the 4th of July, Americans gather and they celebrate this idea, celebrate this, they commemorate the idea of freedom and independence. And the essential values that those founding fathers sought to uphold were inscribed in the Declaration of Independence by Thomas Jefferson. When he authored this Declaration of Independence, he mentioned some of the essential values that he and his fellow compatriots thought to uphold or imagined for this country we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator. They are endowed by the Creator to rights. They are endowed by the Creator to unalienable rights, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. These are some of the ideas that they had imagined early on about what they hoped, if you will, for America. Now these were inspired people. There's no doubt about that. They have their own peculiar history. Our founding fathers, the likes of Samuel Adams, John Adams, George Washington, Thomas Paine, Thomas Jefferson and others, they have their own peculiar history that they have to account for, but they were inspired. You know that Thomas Jefferson himself, he had a Qur'an. Thomas Jefferson was inspired by the Qur'an in many ways. And you can buy 
this book, Jefferson's Quran, buy that book and see how Thomas Jefferson was reflecting on the words of Allah in 1776 as he spent those two weeks, perhaps, maybe, we can make that connection, but I'm not going to make it absolutely. But you can see that these were inspired people. But unfortunately, as we all know, the history of our country is not one that is free of blame. The history of our country is one that perhaps these essential ideals that they imagined of men being created equal in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness have not been ideals that we as a country have preserved for all people. We see the scorn of slavery and how that continues to exist, and racism and, and these vile diseases that unfortunately still exist in the fabric of our society and corrode our very well-being. There were legal, there were policies and laws and initiatives and bills upheld by previous Supreme Courts that are categorically blameworthy. And until today, unfortunately, we still, as a country, have not gotten our act together. In 2018, we have a president who decides on pure political terms, no substantiated risk, no substantiated threat, decides, you know what, I'm going to appease my base, I'm going to put out a bill that says that individuals from these countries should be banned. No credible threat, no actual academic works or, or policy studies that indicate that this is a meaningful endeavor, but no, it's just pure ego, desire, you know, pandering to a political group. I'm going to ban individuals who come from Somalia, from Libya, from Yemen, from Iraq. And then it fell, and it failed once, and twice, and three times, until unfortunately, our Supreme Court once again upholds policies that fly in the face of the values that our forefather had imagined. Not to say that they were free of sin themselves, but nonetheless, when we decide arbitrarily in 2018 to ban individuals from the country, from the likes of countries like Yemen and, and Somalia, lands that we all know have been war-torn and ravaged for years by all sorts of political controversies and problems and issues, who are seeking respite and who are seeking refuge, who are seeking liberty and happiness. And we decide off of a false notion of security and protection to just ban people from our shores. What does that have to do with the Declaration of Independence? What does that have to do with freedom? These values that as Americans we love, we celebrate, we do fireworks and eat hot dogs and hamburgers and get all excited about. But the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of what we're doing that has nothing to do with those values and those ideals. Quite the contrary, it is a direct assault on those values and ideals. That we all agree as human beings, Christians, Muslims, Jews, otherwise, that these are good values. Freedom is a good thing. Freedom is a good thing. The conception of freedom that I am not to be controlled by an oppressor or a tyrant, that is a good thing. To have liberty is a good thing. To have life is a good thing. So under any metric, those pursuits are good pursuits. And every human being should pursue them in the political social realm. So when we are accosting and assaulting our own values, then something is essentially wrong with who we are. You look at what's happening on the borders of our country. What's happening at the borders of our country? That we are allowing ourselves to separate children from their parents. The most sacred bond that exists in humanity is the bond that connects the child with the mother and the father. The most sacred bond. لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَيَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا Not from amongst us is the one who does not honor the elder and have mercy with the youngster, with the child. The womb, what is the womb called in Arabic? Rahim. 
to indicate by Allah's design that the essential nurturing value that connects the most sacred bond, the parent with the child is one of mercy. So the word for mercy, rahim, rahma, and womb, rahim, they share an origin. Sacred bond. Then we, in our state of freedom and independence, choose to separate children from their parents. What kind of independence and freedom is that? I want you to, I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm trying to say here. What kind of independence and freedom produces a policy that is willing to separate children from its parents as a political deterrent, as a measure to punish those who are coming from El Salvador and who are coming from war-torn lands in South America that we had the biggest part in creating in the first place and then we say, no, don't come in and on top of that, we will separate children from parents. What kind of independence and freedom is that? Where is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in that? That's a question that as Americans we have to ask ourselves. Yesterday, Judy Woodruff, she posted that a child, pay attention, a child that was separated from their parent for 85 days, for 85 days, a toddler separated from their parent. When the child went back to its parent, it was riddled in lice. Not even a shower, not even changing the bedding or the clothing, the child was riddled in lice. Where is the freedom in that? Where is the liberty in that? Where is, where is, where is the independence in that? It's 2018 and we, we set up cages to put children in. Something is really wrong with our independence and freedom. And this is what I want us to reflect on. What is freedom? What is independence? What are these things? What do they mean? Because, see, as Americans, we love our freedom. We have the freedom to do whatever it is we want. And it's true. For the most part, it is a very good thing to have. We are free to gather. We are free to practice our religion. We are free to, to roam around and go and not have to worry about bombs dropping on our head. Are these not objectively good things? Alhamdulillah. We don't, we don't reject the khair. We say, Alhamdulillah, these are good things. However, when our freedom is one that is unrestricted, unmitigated, I do whatever I want, whatever my shahwa desires, whatever my ego desires, then this is where we find policies such as separating children from their parents at the border, banning Muslims from across the world arbitrarily. This is what happens when you have an unrestricted, unmitigated freedom. There is a reality that plays out and I have to, we have to be wary of this. There is a reality that plays out that when I and when I do not restrict myself, when I do whatever it is I want to do, very often, I will create harm. When I am not controlled, disciplined, when I am not upholding orders and values and principles, it is very often the case that I will cede myself to my nafs, to my ego, and I will cause and wreak tremendous havoc on earth. So we have to ask ourselves, what is freedom and are we truly free? Because we like to say we are free. Listen, the person who put these bills, who wrote down these executive orders, very free. <laughs> By the conventions of our time, endless amounts of wealth, endless amounts of media opportunities can do whatever he wants. Very free. What did he produce? What did he produce? Something not good. Correct? So we have to question what is freedom and are we really free? Because when you look at the, our own Quran, you look at the guidance of Sayyiduna wa Habibuna wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a definition of freedom that we have to learn to reflect on and to process because in it, 
is true freedom, not the perceived freedom that many of us think we have. And I want us to be very thoughtful here. I'm not saying political freedom is not a good thing. No, it is objectively a good thing. But freedom is far more profound than just horizontal freedom, than just political freedom to move and go and buy and sell. That's a level of freedom, but it is not the essence of freedom. And this is what I want us to understand. When you look at the words of the likes of Rabbi ibn Amir, when he went and he stood in front of Rustum, what did he say? He said, Ibta'athan Allah. لنخرج العباد من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد ومن جور الأديان إلى عدل الإسلام ومن ضيق الدنيا إلى سعة الدنيا والآخرة that Allah has sent us this was the message that was was imbued in their hearts sent to them relayed to them inculcated in their hearts by Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to say to Rustum listen God has sent us for these essential reasons. To exit people from the tyranny and the oppression and the subservience to other beings. That I am not here as a human being to be dominated tyrannically by you. And you are not here to be dominated tyrannically by me. That is not to say we don't believe in order. We don't believe in authority. No, we believe in order. We believe in authority. We believe in concepts of hierarchy. There has to be a controlled reality. There has to be law. However, I am not a abd of any human being, of any political reality. I am only a servant of Allah. I am only subservient to Allah, the Creator. And that's why he said, لِنُخْرِجِ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ To exit people from the worship of other created beings to the worship of Allah, the creator of all beings. And from the aggression and the oppression of many, many worldly, human created philosophies and ideas that very often harm people, that very often oppress people, because at the end of the day, if the philosophy is created by a human being, it is going to be drastically limiting and limited in its ability to care for the general welfare of all. And so, to exit people from that into the justice of Islam. Inna dina inda Allah al-Islam. Not Muslims, no, no, Islam. Because Muslims very often are oppressive, very often are harmful very often are despotic. We have tremendous capacity to be harmful people. No, we're talking about Islam, Deenullah, that is absolutely just and absolutely merciful and absolutely perfect. لِنُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ وَمِنْ جَوْرِ الْأَدْيَانِ إِلَىٰ عَدْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمِنْ دِيقِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَىٰ سِعَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And from the tight constrictions of the dunya, Realizing by the grace of Allah, by the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am not a prisoner of this dunya. I don't belong in this dunya. This is not my eventual abode. This is not my space of absolute joy. Not this dunya. What Islam liberates us and shows us is that there is something far beyond the simple confines of the dunya. There is the endlessness of the akhirah. Si'atu dunya wal akhirah. When I wake up and I realize, why am I so suffocated in this dunya? Why am I so controlled by the dollar? Why am I so controlled by political realities, social circumstances? Why am I so anxious over what's happening? I don't have this and I don't have that. Why am I so obsessed and oppressed mentally and spiritually by material realities when if I just simply surrender myself to Allah, the only one who is absolutely free, then I will feel truly liberated. And I will experience freedom for the first time. 
Because brothers and sisters, freedom is freedom from the self. Freedom is freedom from the shaitan. Freedom is freedom from, from politics and social philosophies and ideas and this trajectory and that party and this issue and the obsession over as if my entire salvation lies in the success of this party or that party. No, no. Freedom is to say, Al Mulku Lillah, Al Fadlu Lillah. Nothing will touch us except that which Allah has decreed. That's freedom. Because, you know, as human beings, we like to say or think that we are free. You know, I'm free to do whatever it is I want. Actually, without getting into it too philosophically, even experientially you're not free. You're limited. We're all limited by time and space. Can I, can I jump up to the moon right now if I wanted? No. There's a lot of money and engineering and, and apparatuses that are required for me to be able to go into space. I'm limited by time, limited by space, limited by my body, limited by all sorts of realities that I have zero control over. I am actually arguably not that free. I do have, by the will of Allah, freedoms. Freedoms that Allah has decreed for me. But these freedoms without restriction, freedoms without limitation, freedom without discipline, freedom without order and principle and value and ideals, freedom without guidance, leads the individual immediately to self-destruction. I am free right now to eat a hundred hot dogs. Free to do that. And some, some people did that the other day in this contest. Let me ask you a question. Is eating a hundred hot dogs a good thing? No, it is objectively a bad thing. No one would say eating a hundred hot dogs is a good thing. But you're free to do it. Are you free to watch TV for 10 hours a day? Yes. You are very free to do that. But is watching TV for 10 hours a day a good thing? Absolutely not. Even, you know, we have, like the, the Arab will say, Yes, you're, you have freedoms to do good things and you have freedom to do very bad and idiotic things. So freedom alone, clearly, is not a virtue in and of itself, but it is a guided, principled, disciplined freedom that we are looking for. Because as I noted earlier, Land of, the, land of the free, complete independence, produce policies that are very ugly and fly in the face of the values that we seek to uphold. So then what we need is to understand that number one, we will never be absolutely free because Allah is the only one who is absolutely free. And the only ability that I have to be free, truly free, is by connecting myself and limiting myself and guiding myself by the one who is absolutely free and that is Allah. That is my only hope to attain absolute liberation and freedom. Beyond that, I'm a slave. And you have to understand that. Because the person who decides to say, listen to this, I am free, I have the freedom to eat a hundred hot dogs, they're not speaking correctly. That's not really freedom because you're not free. What you are is you are subservient to the desires of your lower self. You are a slave to your shahwa. That's more descriptive of who you actually are than to say, I am free. Do you understand what I'm saying? We love to say this, and a free, and a hur. But if all I'm doing all night and all day, eating, drinking, watching TV, watching pornography, listening to trash, doing this, doing everything that pleases myself, I'm not free. I'm a slave. Actually, I am a very bad slave. <laughs> Meaning that my life is decrepit. Qatada, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created creations, khalaq al-khalq. خلق الملائكة لهم عقول 
بدون شهوة. He created the angels, they have minds without shahwa. And he created creation, he created the behemoth, has shahwa without a mind. He created the beast, has desire without aql, without mind. But then he created the human, and it has aql, and it has shahwa. It has intellect, and it has desire. And whenever the human being orients themselves around their aqlani orientation, then they can elevate beyond the level of the angels. But if they orient themselves around their shahwani, subu'i, bahimi orientation, their animalistic dog itself, then their reality will be one of animalistic. There is an argument to be made that brothers and sisters, many of us, and please forgive me, and I, wallahi, I include myself in this. Many of us are oriented around a bahimi orientation. Many of us. That is the reality of so many of us as Americans. And so if my orientation is subu'i, you know what subu'i means? It means like hyena. A hyena doesn't care. A hyena just wants to kill and destroy. If that's my orientation, I don't care about anyone but myself. And I will kill and destroy and pillage and harm and hurt. It doesn't matter because I am animalistically oriented. That's not freedom. Don't call it freedom because freedom is a much higher beautiful virtue than to, than, than to make it profane by saying, I do whatever I want, I kill whatever I want, I steal whatever I want, I eat whatever I want, I harm however I want, and then I say I am free. No. I am a slave to myself. I am a slave to the will and the, the impulses and the, the whims of the shaitan as he whispers in my ear. That's more of my haqiqah than to say, I am free. Yeah, I may have some political freedoms, which are virtuous and good, and we should pursue and advocate for as a society. But if I am not guided by Allah, then I am a slave. And I may be one of the ugliest forms of slavery. Me, I may be one of the ugliest forms of slavery. Is that clear? Does this make sense? Surah Al-A'raf, I want you to go and read this verse today and, and reflect on it. One, ayah 157. Al-Ladheena yattabi'oona al-Rasool al-Nabiyya al-Ummi Al-Ladhi yajidoonahu maktooban indahum fi al-Tawrati wal-Injil الذين يجدونه مكتوبا عنده في التوراة والإنجيل يأمر, يأمر بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر ويحل, ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويضع عنهم إصرهم والأغلال التي كانت عليهم فالذين آمنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه أولئك هم المفلحون this, to me, is the verse of freedom. If you want to talk about liberation and the, ph the philosophy of being liberated, it's in this ayah, it's, it's there. Where Allah speaks about those who followed the Rasul, the Nabi, the Ummi, the Messenger, the Prophet who is unlettered. The one that is found inscribed in the Torah and in the Gospel. And they will find it inscribed there. The one who enjoined them to good and forbid them from evil and made lawful that which is good and made prohibited that which is bad and removed from upon them their burdens. And the shackles, the chains that were upon them. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He enjoined good, he forbid evil, he made lawful, and he made unlawful. What is that? Boundaries and parameters, limitations. And by doing that, what is to be inferred, by doing that, he removed the burdens and he removed the chains. You see that? Do you see that? Nod your head if you see that. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the burdens and the chains by granting us the Rasul, Al-Nabi, Al-Ummi, the one who is 
sent to us by Allah, the absolutely free, to free us from the limited confines of this dunya which is dani, this dunya which is small and limited and profane, and it is, is, it is withering away. It is the equivalent of a dead jifa, a dead carcass. Because we don't want to be controlled by this dunya anymore. I don't want to be controlled by my nafs anymore. I don't want to be compelled to sit there and watch pornography like I, I am an uncontrolled beast. I don't want to be someone who steals money and who lies and who is corruptive. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be a slave of my shahwa anymore. I want to be free. I want to be liberated. The only way, wallahi, the only way, is you figure out what this profound, miraculous book is telling you to do. You follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You hold on to them with your molars. And you say, Sami'na wa ata'na. Ya Allah, I have realized that I'm living my life like an uncontrolled beast with this freedom, this horizontal political freedom that I have. I live like an animal. But I don't want to live like an animal anymore. I don't want to be a slave to money. I don't want to be a slave to my desires. I don't want to be an abusive husband anymore. I don't want to be a nasty belligerent husband who, who smacks his wife or beats his wife or acts like a tyrant. Because by the way, wallahi, there is no strength in that. The person who acts like a belligerent tyrant in the home or elsewhere is the weakest of people. Wallahi, that is the truth. If I am a bully in the home and a bully elsewhere, I'm not free. I am a slave of my lower self and I am very weak. Strength is the one who knows how to live with principle and to say, objectively touching my wife or touching this or speaking with filth or yelling or, or screaming or being nasty, that is weakness. That is being a slave to the self. I am a higher being. I am a human being. I want to be malaiki. I want to be angelic. So I will not. I will not be a slave to myself. That's power. You don't have to play video games for 20 and 10 hours and 30, 40 hours a week. Don't be a slave to your whims and your diet. Don't. Young people, don't do that. You're much more than that. You are, a, you are a creation of Allah. You are a dignified creation of Allah. Allah gave you a aql, He gave you a body. He gave you a capacity to do remarkable amounts of goodness on this earth. If you allow yourself to be limited to the desires of yourself every day, then you will only cause harm on this earth. And that's what's happening in our country as America. That's what's happening in our country. Freedom to choose absolutely is not a good thing. And you want to you wanna learn more about this, read the book, The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz, who's an American psychologist, who makes it very clear that in no time in human history have we had more chances, choices than we have today, and we are the most miserable people. We have choices we have. We can go into a supermarket and we can buy hundreds of different salad dressings, as he says in a TED Talk. And we're still miserable. I can go into a store and buy a hundred different types of pants, but I am miserable. Why? Because this reality of an unrestricted choice creates misery in the self at the deepest psychological, spiritual level, but we're not attuned to that. We just think absolutely this must be good. More is better. No, he says more is less. And more is less in where it matters. So I look at Allah says, don't do this and do that. Allah gives me some haram and I freak out. I am just utterly obsessed by the fact that Allah said, you cannot do one, two, three, four, five things. Why would Allah be so restricting and why is he so angry? No, a'udhu billah. Wallahi al-azim, Allah does not do anything but for our own happiness and benefit. And that's why in the end of this verse of Surah Al-Araf, those who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعَزَّرُوهُ And they honor Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَنَصَرُوهُ And they bring victory to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ And they followed the light that was sent down with him. Because all he has for us is light. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those are the successful people. Those are the happy people. The people who say, you know what? 
One hot dog is enough, alhamdulillah. I don't need a hundred. That's a happy person. Because that's a person who's controlled and restricted themselves and created self-discipline. Anyone here knows that objectively, you finish watching TV for a few hours and you feel sick to your stomach. You feel lethargic and bothered. But if you work out and you're proactive and you're productive, you feel very good. That's just a part of the human condition. The only way for you to feel psychologically and emotionally good is the, you had to restrict yourself. You had to say no to yourself. You had to be disciplined. That's something that makes sense to all of us experientially. We all know that makes sense in every part of life. So Allah is saying something very simple. I created you. I know what's best for you. The only way you're going to taste freedom is when you surrender to me. That's it. That is the only time you will taste true freedom and happiness. But if you walk around worshipping yourself, and you say, Anna, I will do this no matter what. I don't care who says what. I don't care what anyone thinks. I don't, I don't. And you keep on ingrandizing your I, yourself. Then you are a tyrannical slave. That's the haqiqah. If your goal and your mission and your entire existence is not to attain the pleasure of Allah and to follow in the footsteps of the guidance, the beautiful, merciful guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then something is very, very wrong with one's lifestyle. Because, and I'll close with this, I'll close the first khutbah with this. Many of us, we will taste the pain of our freedoms in the dunya. If you live unrestrictedly, you live according to your shahwa and your desire, many people in the dunya, they experience the pains of that absolute freedom by ending up in jail, by ending up with all sorts of diseases. Do you know how many sexually transmitted diseases exist in this country based on illicit sexual behavior? Because we are in an age of sexual freedom, do whatever it is what you want to do, have relations with anyone. Almost a fourth of, of American citizens walk around with sexually transmitted diseases. Is that a good thing? No, it's not. But we will never say, maybe it's not a good thing to have unrestricted sexual behavior. We will never say that because why? We'll freak out and say, no, no, our freedoms. So why is it okay for us to utilize our freedoms to create such realities such as a fourth of Americans walking around with STDs? Why is that a good thing? Why don't we want to question these things? This is what our obligation is, brothers and sisters. We have to question. So many of us, we will experience the pain, the pain of our unbridled freedom in the dunya. And many of us, we will experience that reality. But more importantly, more importantly, there is the akhirah. You can be as free as you want in the dunya. You can get away with anything you want in the dunya. You can lie, cheat, steal, be belligerent, a bully. You can do whatever you want. Wallahi, yawmul qiyamah will come. And we will all stand. And we will all account for what? Our freedoms. You know, أنا حر أعمل اللي أنا عاوز أعمله أنا حر إنت مالك Yes, it's limited, very limited But I promise you, all of us will stand in front of Allah And Allah will say, what did you do with that حرية? How did you use it? You pursued it politically and you, you, stri you strive in every possible way To attain a dunyawi freedom And then what did you do with it? And that's the question that as Americans we have to ask because if in 2018, we have policies that are separating children from their parents at the borders when we're banning human beings arbitrarily, then our freedoms are very problematic. Then we have an unbridled freedom that is eating us from within. And so as Americans, we have to stand up and say, we need to check our freedom. And as human beings and as Muslims, as individuals, we have to say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I seek your forgiveness. 
your, I ask you to erase my arrogance and my nafs and to help me to surrender myself to you, the absolute freedom, the haqq. That's what I need. Every single day, what you need in your life, brothers and sisters, is you need to surround yourself by people, not who are just going to say, go ahead, do whatever you want, you're free. No, you're going to say, where are the people telling me and pointing me towards Allah? And Allah is the one who's telling me, listen, this is how you must live your life. Because that becomes a good life. That becomes a happy, happy life. That becomes a successful life. That becomes a joyous life. That becomes a liberated life. You become content. مِنْ ضِيقِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى سِعَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Then you enter into the endlessness and the expansiveness of the dunya. You're above the fray. You're above the fray. You're no longer controlled by what's happening politically. I was going to say this in the second khutbah. I'll finish this now and then we'll end the khutbah here, inshallah. And we'll make the dua in the second khutbah. So many of us, we are suffocated by political realities. Please pay attention as I'm closing. So many of us, our ilah has become what is happening politically. What the political circumstances are will dictate who I am and how I feel. So you saw, for example, in the Muslim world, you had this Arab Spring, and so much of what happened fell apart and dictators even worse came into control and then what happened so many people they lost hope they lost faith kafaru bid dunya many of them i've well kafarna bid dunya they said we have kufr in this all we're sick and tired of it all depression sadness anxiety suicide why because a political reality didn't come into existence is that good or bad is that right or wrong? Wallahi, it's wrong. Because whoever said that a political reality must be? No one ever said that your candidate must win, and if he or she doesn't win, then you will fall apart. That must not be the case. Because political realities, social realities, they are not Allah. Quite the contrary. This dunya, by design, will always be a tumultuous place. This dunya by design will always be a place in a space where you will have ups and downs and tyranny and oppression. Sometimes those who are leading are good people and sometimes those who are leading are bad people. That is the nature of the dunya. That doesn't mean you don't pursue justice. No, you pursue it. You pursue it with your limbs. You move, do sa'i, move forward, try to remove munkar, try to remove evil and uphold khair and goodness. But you're not a abd of politics. You're Abd of Allah. People, they saw the Supreme Court upholding this political, this uh, travel ban and went nuts. This will change the nature of the world for the coming. Calm down. Yes, it's objectively a bad thing. And I spoke most of the khutbah saying how this is wrong and it's antithetical to our values. And yes, we should be proactive about calling our representatives, calling our elected officials and telling them we reject these bans. We stand against what is happening on the, on the borders with the, the immigration policy. We should be very proactive. But that's a matter of sharia. That's a matter of what you do with your limbs. But your haqiqah, your essential truth is only Allah. So whether the dunya is a place where you have political policies that you love and you're thriving in or not, that doesn't impact who you are in your soul. That doesn't motivate your qalb because that is only connected to Allah, like a hurricane. The hurricane, the eye of the storm is calm. The crosswinds are going crazy, picking up cars and trees and buildings and causing all sense of destruction. But the eye of the hurricane is always settled. That's the haqiqah of someone who is a mu'min billah. Muslim. Someone who believes and, and, and commits themselves to Allah. Who only, only is moved by Allah. That's the goal that we want to pursue, brothers and sisters. So don't compromise your deen. Because you're seeking some sort of social or political reality. Many of us today, because of our obsession with the political circumstances we have compromised 
the Quran and the Sunnah in the way of our ulama under a false conception of upholding justice. No. Be very careful what you're doing with your freedoms, as I said. Be very careful. Be very careful what you're pursuing because you very well could be pursuing something that is antithetical to Allah, the Most High, the Most Great, the Absolutely Free. So don't be a prisoner of the political circumstances. Don't be motivated so egregiously by what is happening socially. Engage it with your sharia, ah, with your values of mercy and justice, but do not let it seep into your heart so now you become a abd of the political social reality. Because that, that is not freedom. May Allah help us to be truly free. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be free of our shahawat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be free of our egos. May Allah help us to be free of our nufus. May Allah help us to be free of political, social realities. May Allah help us to be free of the shaitan. May Allah help us to be free of every single thing that takes us away from him. Allah, the most high, the most great. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مبل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على حبيبنا محمد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله أكبر we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the dhakirin, amongst the shakirin, amongst the ibad al-saliheen. May Allah make us amongst his righteous servants who follow in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single day of our lives. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant us true freedom and that is the freedom to worship you and to surrender to you. Ya Allah, we ask you for your rida, for your acceptance. Ya Allah, we ask you to forgive all of our shortcomings and our weaknesses. All of that which we have done before and after Ramadan. For after Ramadan, Ya Allah, we have committed much wrong. We ask you to forgive us and to alleviate these shackles of, of, of sin from upon us. Remove from upon us and liberate us from the shackles of shahwa, from the shackles of ego. Ya Allah, forgive us and be pleased with us. And allow us to die on the karima of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة